Hello everybody. Welcome to chapter number 10. Biggest difference to last time is a new display as already announced last time in video number 9. So if we switch on the baby, that's what it looks like. Really cool thing. Why didn't anybody tell me in before there are such cool displays out there? Hmm. Maybe I haven't asked for it, but anyways, really amazing displays. Uh, I have to admit dealing with them is a little different and sometimes strange because they come with an own programming environment. And uh, But once that is done, you just shift the data to the display and uh, it, it works really like a charm. Uh, and it even offers uh, touch functionality, which is not implemented yet because that requires some more programming, uh, bidirectional communication and so on. So that might happen later on. We still have our different pages with more details, with all cell voltages and even yeah, maybe for, for later on already uh, a little bit history of speed and energy consumed. Okay, so if we put it to forward, you can see the D in the left upper corner, pushing the throttle. It works wonderful. Everything else as well blink, uh, reverse, neutral, good. Uh, heater, windscreen heater, brake. Okay, what else has changed? So let's get out of the vehicle. Um, uh, the 12 volt battery found a new housing and is back at its original place. I cleaned up everything a little bit. Um, the cable tree mounted some more body parts. <clears throat> so almost all body parts are attached again. Just uh, some parts in the, of the interior are missing, as you can see naturally. And um, if you ask yourself, isn't there something wrong for that test drive a few seconds ago? Yes, unfortunately. The vehicle is jacked up because um, I do have a problem with the dual drive unit. During all the test drives I did, um, it turned out that the revolt motors are probably a little bit too strong, at least too strong for my dual drive unit. Under very high loads, there seems to be a misalignment of the shafts and I already damaged several timing belts. So I need to redesign to update the dual drive unit once again, probably the 100th time meanwhile. But anyways, during that progress process of upgrading the dual drive unit, I probably will also switch to the Revolt 160E, which are more Powerful, but also more fun. Okay, so hooked up. Ah, oh, over here we've got also some some details. Um, I, I uh, attached four magnets to one of uh, uh, to to a rear wheel and a hall sensor and a small microcontroller program uh, measuring the time from rising to rising edge and uh, sending that to a TXT file, which could be evaluated later on, because I promised that last time. And if only you've got some kitties at home, you know, a promise is something holy. Don't mess up with promises. So here's the promise. Oh, what do we have? That's the Scilab program evaluating the CSV the txt file so to say and uh, displaying the data. Uh, Scilab is the open source version of MATLAB so if you've got a problem out of the world of math I can highly recommend Scilab. Okay that's what it then finally looks like. 
Um, you can display the speed in kilometers per hour over time in seconds and that data comes from the original TWSI, not modified, which is supposed to have a maximum torque of 55 newton meters as far as I can remember. You can see I performed a rolling start with two, two and a half kilometers per hour and then at a sudden hit full throttle and the vehicle accelerates. Just as a reminder, the slope of that characteristic is the, the acceleration change in speed, right? Keep that in mind. Using the power box from Norway and setting it to light tuning, you can already see a huge difference, especially in the beginning, it got much steeper. I think that's from 55 to 80 newton meters probably and uh, using the strongest uh, modification which is offered by that uh, power box it looks like that and the change is not that big in the beginning anymore it's exactly the same uh, as you can see but at higher speeds it keeps on accelerating a little bit more but then it gets flatter and flatter why where does that change in characteristic come from? In the beginning, we've got a very high torque and then, because uh, it's an induction machine in the original TWSI, uh, if you increase the frequency of the rotating field, you need to increase the voltage as well. But voltage is limited, it's the battery voltage, and that's uh, why we are moving into field weakening and the torque couldn't, kept, couldn't be kept upright and finally the acceleration goes down that's why we've got that change in characteristic basically okay now we are all curious what it looks like for the dual drive unit i also did some measurements it looked like that hmm. Mm -hmm. two differences basically on the one hand the acceleration in the beginning is lower surprisingly low, up to a speed of 30 kilometers per hour, 20, 25 kilometers per hour, it is comparable to the unmodified TWSI. A little disappointing probably. But then we do not have that change in characteristic. It keeps on accelerating. That's already what I told you uh, last time with my feeling in the stomach that it really keeps on pushing till the end and especially at higher speeds like 50, 60, 70 kilometers per hour the acceleration is much higher than for the modified VESI. And now let me tell you that that uh, blue, light blue characteristic was measured with current limitations of 45%. 45% battery current, 45% motor current which led to a peak of 21 kilowatts electrical power only somewhere over here in that range. The next measurement was done with 60% um, current limitation and it looks like that. As expected, the acceleration gets higher, still a very straight behavior, constant acceleration, lots of fun. But then, unfortunately, I had some problems with the drive unit. The timing belt made uh, ugly noises and I had to abort that measurement. Somewhere over here, that's where we are today. <laughs> and everything else is left open for the future, unfortunately. But as you might imagine, if you uh, keep on going from 45 to 60, 75, 90%, you might estimate that finally the acceleration of the dual drive unit is probably even a little lower than the modified TWSI, but then soon, already at a speed of 20, 25, 30 kilometers per hour, the dual drive unit kicks in and keeps on accelerating. But proof is still missing and might come in the near future as soon as all the upgrades and redesigns are done hopefully before Christmas. So far, oh, lots of talking, 10 minutes, sorry, should have been a little shorter. But anyways, I hope uh, you enjoyed it and feel free to comment. See you next time. Goodbye.